They're running? Yep. Yeah, I see the little red dot flashing. That means it's running. Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. Talking about sacred geometry. About 95% of the people that I talk to that are interested in sacred geometry have come to it uh, intuitively. Something about the form, something about the shapes attracts them. They're being drawn intuitively. That's about 95% of the people. The novice, the novice that gets interested in sacred geometry is almost always instantly confused, daunted by the unbelievable amount of information all of a sudden just flowing over them. That you can't take it in. And when I talk to people like that, they ask me, hey, Charlie, make it like baby talk. I can't understand this. Pretend I was in the sixth grade or something. What is sacred geometry? And when they ask me that, I always dig in my pockets and I look for some change. I'm looking for seven nickels or seven dimes or seven quarters or seven yen or seven shillings. I put them on a table. I put one coin in the middle. And I put six coins right around that one coin so that they're all touching one another perfectly. And when that happens, when I get that pattern just right, I point to it and I say, that's it. That's sacred geometry. They go like, what? That's it? That's sacred geometry? That can't be it. Just think about it. That is a perfect principle of the universe, right in front of your eyes, an unchanging principle. Something that can't change, won't change, has never changed, is going to be the same until this universe goes away. And because it is unchanging and a perfect manifestation of what you could call God-mind, the intelligence behind this universe, that's why it's sacred. That is why it's sacred. Seven is a very magical number, always has been. Always has been associated with spirit, always has been associated with something magical, mysterious, mystical. Those seven circles, those seven coins, are actually the heart of the famous icon of sacred geometry called the Flower of Life. Another interesting thing about the seven circles is that they perfectly fit in two circles of common radius. These seven circles relate to so many levels of sacred geometry, it's, it's pretty uncanny that they fit into this whole system in such a perfect way. They go on and on. In the past, the people who were interested in sacred geometry were very interested, primarily interested in the mathematics and the science aspect of it. But now, we're starting to feel that sacred geometry is some kind of a spiritual relationship to the universe. And we are seeing it more and more as a doorway into those aspects of God-mind which are eternal. So when you hang out, with these forms, when you hang out with mandala, when you hang out with the forms of sacred geometry, you are opening up a doorway into a timeless reality, into the timeless perfection. Don't be freaked out by it. It's just get into it one step at a time. That's what we're doing with these videos. We're, we're trying to create little vignettes that will give you one little piece of the puzzle at a time. So now, you see, when your friends ask you what sacred geometry, you just get in your pocket and you pull out your seven pennies. Put them on the table and you say, that's sacred geometry. Huh?